Hello everyone and welcome to SE Geek, the internet's most passionate software engineering show. I am your host, the Software Engineering Geek, and on this show we're going to be showing you uh, Get Law. So sit back and let the knowledge flow in, because SE Geek begins now. Okay, in this video we're going to be talking about get log. So I've shown you get k, which is a good way of looking at commits in your repository. Another way to look at these is through get log, which is you know purely the command line way of looking at commits. So let's just show that quickly. Like just this is just you know, if you just run get log, you get the commits, the author, the commit message, you can scroll through them, page up, page down arrow keys you know pretty simple but you know it's it's on the command line so it, it does have some limitations to some degree well it's it can be you know somewhat harder to look at them sometimes through the command line but one of the advantages of this is if you know the get log commands you can pass any of those options on to get k and you know it extends what you can do and what you can see through get k and i showed you the views just briefly well this will also allow you to you know take advantage of those views a lot more and i'll show you that that's coming up in another tutorial by itself but we're going to talk a little bit more about get log so i showed you just the basic get log but there's also get log we'll show you a few more options um pretty equals one line and now we can see um, you know the commit shaws just all lined up and just the commit messages which can be a little bit more readable for you know certain purposes um, let's clear that off and do this time let's do get log um, stat so and what this does is it gives you the status of each different between each different commit log so you get to see which files change and you know how many files and some you know basic statistics which can be again useful so let's clear that and just for the heck of it let's do dash u 10 which what this will do is it'll show me the actual diffs between commits now looking at you know com diffs on the command line can actually be kind of harder than say doing it through get k where you know the differences between one file and another and different commits are easier to see just because of the way it's displayed based um rather than you know here where it's it can be a little bit harder you know it's it's not you know unbearable but by any means but you know you can easily get lost in this rather than if you were on get k where you can go between one commit and another and it's a little bit more bounded that way or one file and another um but knowing this is you know it's a good thing so i'm going to show you uh let's just do um an ls just to see what's in this particular directory and we are going to do a get log of an actual file. So before I've been showing you uh, getk, you see the whole entire repository. You see, you know, the changes over time. But you're, you know, a lot of people want to know, like, what's the history of a particular file? So you can do get, you know, log of a particular file, or you could do getk of a particular file. I'll show you that in just a second. So we do that, and these are all the different changes to that one file. So you know, as I said, we'll do Q to get out of there. We'll do a clear and we'll do a get K of that readme. And the same thing is now, you know, I pass that option to get K. You can see just the changes for that particular file. And as I said, you know, some things are a little bit easier to actually look at within get K than on the command line. But, you know, there are other uses for like, you know, if you're doing some like type of script or automation and you want to get like a particular list of SHA numbers, you can do that using get log. So, you know, there are trade-offs. 
Um, let's see. Another thing I'm going to talk about, uh, actually, let's look at the, before I get into that, the, uh, go do get log, and I've showed this before, help. So, you know, as I said, there are, you know, manual pages, and, you know, if you're familiar with Linux, you know what manual pages are. If you're not, you know, if you're from Windows, manual pages, like every command usually has a manual page, which, you know, tells you, you know, basically, you know, the name, how to use it, options, and whatnot. And they're usually within the same, you know, standard format. Uh, you can also usually search, uh, you know, just through, uh, oh, say, uh, Google and find, uh, you know, web-based versions of these manual pages, which, you know, in certain respects might be easier for you to search through and read. But, uh, you know, we're on the command line right now, so we'll just take a look through this. Now, forget log, its manual page is huge. It has a ridiculous amount of options. Like, this is the thing about this particular command is it has unlimited options, uh, almost. <laughs> so I don't use hardly any of these. I use, you know, a few of these. And, you know, some of them are very powerful. And I, actually, I'm going to, in another tutorial, go into some of the, you know, what I found, find more powerful uh, options, but you know there are some very powerful options here. If you want to get very specific on how you look at your particular um, Git repo, you know the history of your Git repository. So that that's you know just the the particular Git help. Now, uh, actually, let's go back to that because I wanted to go over one thing in particular. So another thing you see here is with options, you see the sense and the dot dot until. So what you can put in here are uh, tags and branches. Um, and I've, I've talked a little bit about branches before, and I'll be talking more about those in another tutorial, uh, you know, in much more depth. But uh, right now I'm going to talk about tags, uh, which I'm not going to be talking about in pretty much any to any other tutorial because there, there's not a lot to them, so I'm just going to, you know, state it pretty much right now. But you can do, you know, from one tag to another tag. So let's look at get tags for a moment. Do get tag dash L for list because um, get tag has, you know, it, it, I don't know why, but for one re for whatever reason, you have to do dash L to get a list where every other command I know like get branch you just type branch you don't have to do dash l and you get the list but anyways this is how you get the list of tags and what a tag is is what what these are are just uh you know names pointers back to a particular commit that never change so this will always point to the same commit so it's a way of versioning your commits or making a pointer to a particular commit that never changes so you know this is good if you're releasing a product you know version 1.1.1 .1 .1. this commit this uh tag will point to that particular commit and will never change so what I can do is say I want to see the uh, logs that change between version 1.1.1 .1 and version 1.1.2. I can do a get log and I can do version 1.1.1 dot dot version 1.1.2 and we'll do tack tack pretty equals one line hit enter and we see just the commits that changed between those two versions and just to prove this um you'll see that you know it's a lot shorter than if i went through the whole entire version history so you know it's just those commits that change between those two tags you can do the same thing for branches um Again, we'll talk more about that in a later uh, tutorial. So that's pretty much what you can do with get log. Uh, you know, as I said, very powerful and just extends what you can do and the way you can look at your commits in your repository. And that's pretty much all for now.